Okay, I'm going to uh, discuss our work on reusable two-round multi-party computation from the DDH assumption. And this is joint work with Sandrum, Daniel, and Prate. So uh, first some background on two-round MPC. Um, so uh, we're interested in the setting where we have uh, N parties, uh, each have their own private input XI, and they wish to jointly compute some circuit C over their inputs um, securely. And we're going to assume they have access to a broadcast channel. And um, you know, an adversary attacking the system, uh, we're going to be in the setting where uh, the adversary is um, uh, has static corruptions. So it's picking which parties it's going to uh, corrupt before the protocol begins. And we're going to be in the dishonest majority setting, allowing the adversary to corrupt potentially up to all but one of the parties. And for this reason, we'll need to rely on computational assumptions. And so we'll restrict our, our, our adversary to be um, polynomial time computable. Okay, and we'll be considering the standard notions of semi-honest and malicious um, you know, simulation-based security. Okay. Um, so why study two round MPC? So um, interaction along with you know communication complexity and computational complexity is like one thing you might want to uh, optimize for in MPC. And two round MPC kind of uh, represents the um, the best you can do in terms of uh, minimizing interaction. Okay. Um, because uh, it's been known um, for a while that one round MPC is impossible. Um, so um, specifically re reusable two, two round MPC is kind of taking um, this uh, minimizing interaction um, a little bit further. So, um, so here what we want to say is that um, the first round message that's computed by these parties may actually be reused across potentially unbounded number of second round executions computing, um, you know, different circuits over, over their same inputs. Um, so in pictures, this looks like the following. So uh, these parties um, in the first round just kind of uh, broadcast messages to each other, committing themselves to their particular inputs. Um, and then later, yes, uh, if they want to compute a circuit C, they just have to uh, you know release one second round message, right? Um, but now if they want to compute, say, a second circuit C over their same inputs, um, all they have to do is again send one more message, okay, reusing their first round uh, messages, and they can keep doing this. Um, so, in particular, like if they say wanted to compute m different circuits over their inputs, um, they only require m plus one messages in total, um, rather than say two m messages um, if they just used regular two round MPC. Um, so, in this way, it's kind of minimizing um, interaction even further. Okay. Uh, so there's a number of um, prior works on two-round MPC and also on reusable two-round MPC, and I'll highlight uh, the reusable ones in orange. Um, there's uh, there's really two paradigms um, to um, that exist for uh, you know for um, developing two-round MPC. The first is based on fully homomorphic encryption, and our first instantiation of this was given by Mukherjee Wicks and um, kind of later improved in that uh, by AJJM recently, and they removed uh, the need for a CRS um, when considering semi-honest adversaries. Okay. Um, a second paradigm is kind of based on this uh, round compressing compiler approach, uh, which was first um, um, uh, shown in uh, this work of GGHR, uh, where they instantiated it based on indistinguishability obfuscation. Okay. And kind of uh, since then, the assumptions needed to instantiate this this sort of approach um, have been improved. So first to bilinear maps, and later to um, kind of the minimal assumption of two message oblivious transfer. Okay. Um, and so another concurrent independent work to ours. Um, so this work of Ben Hamuda and Lin um, also show how to make um, the this is an orange. So they, they show how to make the bilinear map uh, based approach reusable. So note that um, you know before their work. Um, using this round compressing compiler approach, it was only known how to um, maintain reusability um, when using the strong primitive of IO. Okay, and so our work is also kind of fitting into this second approach, and we showed how to weaken the assumption even further. In particular, we show how to do this, um, like maintain reusability, um, just based on the DDH assumption. Okay, so in more detail, assuming DDH. Um, there exists, you know, a semi-honest reusable to run FPC um, in the plane model and a uh, maliciously secure reusable to run FPC in the CRS model. Okay. Um, now, uh, our, our starting point 
um, for actually constructing this is um, kind of the GS18 approach to, to two round MPC. Okay. And this is kind of roughly the template that they follow. In the first round, um, each pair of parties exchanges a set of OT1 messages um, between themselves. Okay. And then in the second round, uh, each party releases a sequence of garbled circuits. And these, these garbled circuits uh, will actually be used to kind of communicate among themselves in um, um, kind of computing maybe a multi-round FPC protocol. But the details of this particular step are not too important um, for us. Um, also, what's more important is kind of understanding what's going on in this first round. And so we can ask the question, um, why is this, why is the GS18 protocol not already reasonable? Um, so, um, the issue is, is that um, kind of the number of OT1 messages that have to be exchanged in the first round uh, grows with the size of the circuit to be computed in the second round. Okay, so for each kind of gate in the circuit uh, that the parties want to compute, they need to exchange a number of OT1 messages. And these OT1 messages um, um, can't be reused in particular because these, these garbled circuits will actually kind of release randomness used to generate these OT1 messages. and um, so that would, um, uh, so this would not be secure if you try to kind of reuse these OT1 messages multiple times. Okay. Um, so, so really, what's going on is that like these OT1 messages are being used to set up kind of useful correlations that the parties are then taking advantage of in the second round. Okay. And so, intuitively, what we would kind of need to to get some notion of reusability is kind of the ability for these. Uh, these parties to communicate in the first round and then set up a potentially unbounded number of, of OT correlations to be used in the second round, rather than just some fixed number that depends on the size of the uh, of their communication, right? So that was kind of our, you know, it's a first, that's our entry point is like, you know, how can we, um, you know, just in, in one round, um, kind of allow these parties to generate a huge number of OT correlations without um, communicating too much, okay? And um, our main tool for, um, for doing this is, is this primitive of homomorphic secret sharing, um, which was introduced by uh, BGI in 2016. Um, so it's a fairly simple primitive. Um, and it, here we consider a, um, a dealer. So for, so for the next uh, few minutes, we'll be um, considering kind of a, a dealer model where we have a trusted dealer that's going to start the protocol by um, giving each of these parties some, some parameters, some messages. So um, for the specific case of HSS, here we have a dealer that has a secret S. Um, this dealer secret shares that secret um, to two parties, P0 and P1. And this is where the homomorphism comes in. So say these um, parties want to compute some circuit C um, over the secret. There's an eval evaluation algorithm that each of them can apply to their share to produce these output shares, S0 prime, S1 prime. And the, uh, you know, the correctness or homomorphism property says that um, these output shares simply XOR to the value of C of S, okay? So, you know, neither of these parties knows what S is, um, like the shares kind of hide what S is, but yet they can homomorph homomorphically compute a function of S um, on their individual shares, okay? And so BGI show how to do this um, from the DDH assumption, as long as the circuit C to be um, computed is, is low depth or in NC1. And one um, kind of caveat of their work is that this correctness requirement, this kind of reconstruction is going to actually um, fail with some inverse polynomial probability. Um, ideally you'd want kind of negligible probability of failure, but um, uh, they only achieve kind of inverse polynomial probability of failure. And this will um, kind of this usually uh, comes up and has to be dealt with in, in applications of HSS. Okay. Now, so we again recall that what we want to do is kind of allow these parties to generate a huge number of, of OT correlations. And we're going to show how to do this um, um, from HSS. And kind of another um, kind of name for, for what we're doing is it's constructing something called the pseudo, pseudo random correlation generator, as introduced in this um, work of Boyle at all. Okay. Um, so first, yeah, what exactly is, is a random OT correlation? So it's a correlation between two parties. The sender uh, gets two random strings, R0, R1. The receiver gets a random bit and one of the two random strings, RB. Okay. Um, 
So to generate many of these with um, a small dealer message, this is um, how we do it. So basically the dealer just chooses uh, two PRF keys, uh, kind of one to be associated to the sender and one to be associated to the receiver. Um, the sender's uh, PRF key has output space in like a lambda bit strings, whereas the receiver's just has um, one bit output. And the dealer will use HSS to share these two keys. And in, in addition, it will also give like the sender's key to the sender and the receiver's key to the receiver. Okay. So now let's say that um, the parties want to kind of compute, say the ith correlation um, where i can be in some very large range. Okay. What they're going to do is they're going to use HSS evaluation um, uh, to compute the following um, you know, function under the, the hood of HSS. So what is this function? Um, they're simply going to be evaluating the sender's um, PRF on input i. And then they're either going to be outputting that string or they're going to be outputting the all zero string. And whether they do this is based on the receiver's PRF um, evaluated at i, right? So if um, the receiver's PRF evaluated at i is just equal to one, uh, then the result of this computation is just the um, um, sender's PRF value. Um, otherwise, the result of this computation is just the all zero string. Okay, and so you know they evaluate this homomorphically to to produce their output shares, and now I'm claiming that these shares can basically be used um, um, to produce a, a random OT correlation. And so on the sender side, um, one of the sender strings is just going to be simply its output share, and the other is going to be its output share XORed with um, its its own PRF um, evaluated at i which it can compute because it has its own key, okay? On the other hand, like the receiver string is just going to be their output share and their choice bit is just going to be their PRF value. Um, so quickly to check um, correctness of this, assuming the HSS is perfectly correct for now, um, let's say B is zero, which means that really these parties just kind of computed um, the all zero string under the hood of HSS. All that means is that Z0 is actually equal to Z1, right? So in particular, RB is equal to R0, okay? And that's what we wanted. If B is equal to one, then Z0 XOR Z1 is going to be um, the sender's PRF value, right? So in that case, um, RB is actually equal to R1, as you can see, okay? So that was um, kind of quickly to check correctness. The point is that like, you know, for any I and say potentially an exponential size range, um, the parties can, compute do this like HSS evaluation and derive these like random OT um, correlations. Um, and so out of this like very small dealer message, which are, which just consists of shares of PRF keys, they can produce potentially, you know, exponentially many um, random OT correlations. Okay. Um, so yeah, before moving on, just a couple um, small things to note. Um, actually, you know, recall that um, um, you know, this HSS is only known for circuits in NC1. So this requires a PRF in NC1 um, to be computed under the HSS. And this is known from DDH um, by Nara Rheingold. And another thing is that actually to instantiate GS18, which I'm not getting into the details of, um, you need a little bit more structure than just simply a bunch of random OT correlations. In particular, you need some structure or some correlations between the different receiver choice bits. Um, and so I won't get into how to, to do that, but it's uh, requires just a little a little more complicated of, of an evaluation procedure here. Okay. Um, so given uh, uh, what we just discussed, which is basically a way to take, um, to have a dealer, um, um, you know, distribute small seeds and then two parties to generate from those small seeds, a large number of OT correlations um, so given that, our, our eventual kind of construction of two round MPC um, proceeds in three steps, okay? The first step is just going to be plug, plugging in this, this HSS primitive um, directly into the GS18 template. And so the primitive that comes out of that is what we call sharing compact multi-party HSS, okay? So in this primitive, again, we're still in this dealer model. Now there's multiple parties, so the dealer will just share kind of secret X among say N parties. Um, and now if the parties uh, decide to compute a circuit, they can each just release a single um, second message MI, which can then be used to reconstruct the output. Okay, 
Mexico. Um, we're going to kind of instantiate this template by having you know the dealer just share between each um, pair of parties, like doing doing this HSS um, sharing of PRF keys as as presented in the last slide. And so that's what these DIs are going to um, consist of. The um, output shares of the second round messages MI are just going to be the GS18 second round messages, where um, we're using the OT correlations generated from these dealer messages um, um, to instantiate the second round message. Okay. And the key property uh, of this primitive that we achieve is the fact that um, the size of the dealer messages D1 through DN are small, in particular, independent of the size of the circuit that the parties can compute in the second round. And this is the key property. Okay. Um, and you might think, oh, like we even get something stronger in the sense that like the set that the dealer messages are reusable and, and can already reusable and can be used to compute many circuits in the second round. So it turns out that this is not true and I won't go into uh, details why, but really the problem stems from the fact that this HSS um, reconstruction is not negligibly correct. There's actually one inverse polynomial error. That error ends up translating into a security uh, issue, um, which we have to fix. Um, but which uh, which results in a primitive that only allows like simulation, um, you know, for a, a single second round message, okay, a single second round computation. So what we get is the sharing compact um, primitive, um, where the dealer shares are small. Um, at this point, the parties can compute a single large circuit, um, but only um, um, security is guaranteed for say one execution of the second round. Okay. So that's kind of the first step. And now it, um, there's really just two more challenges that kind of have to be solved is uh, to get our, our final result of reusable to your own MPC. Um, so first, of course, we want to remove the dealer because um, that's we don't have a, this dealer in a, uh, in a usual to your own MPC setting. And then we also want to make sure the second round is reusable, right? So, um, to remove the dealer, um, we're going to um, uh, do the following, and this is this is our second step. So we're going to be taking our sharing compact HSS and turning it into a, a two-round MPC protocol um, that's not quite reusable, but it satisfies this um, property that we call first message succinctness. Okay, so so here this is the same kind of template from last slide. I'll have now is that there's basically different input associated with each party and the dealer is kind of just sharing the concatenation of all these inputs. Okay, so not really any difference. Um, so to turn this thing into like into an actual MPC, um, first we're going to assume a, uh, what I'm calling here, a vanilla tier on MPC. So kind of a tier on MPC that doesn't um, satisfy any special properties such as first message succinctness or reusability. Um, and for example, GS18 gives such a tier on MPC. Um, and a very natural approach to removing the dealers to simply use this MPC pi uh, to compute the dealer's functionality. Okay, so we can have the parties distributively compute this dealer functionality um, in the first two rounds, and then in a third round, then they can broadcast that messages, MIs. Okay, but really we want two round MPC. So um, uh, to achieve this, we're going to kind of um, compress the third round of that this this approach into the second round um, using garbled circuits. Um, so at a very high level, this is what happens. Um, the parties will use pi not to compute the just the dealer's functionality. They'll use pi to compute um, you know first the dealer messages d1 through dn, and then kind of release labels corresponding to those dealer messages. And in parallel in the second round, um, each party will output a garbled circuit, uh, their own garbled circuit that maps their dealer message di. To their output message um, mi okay so now consider someone that uh, wants to reconstruct the output um, at the end of the second round they have a bunch of labels and they have a bunch of garbled circuits which they can combine um, to produce these output messages mi and then combine those to learn the output of the circuit okay so again see so this is a high level overview and I encourage you to see the paper for more details on this um, transformation but here, what we ended up with is really this two round MPC with the key property that the first round of the MPC, which um, you can notice is just the first round of this MPC protocol pi is small. And the, all the communication and computation needed to compute that first round is 
independent of the size of the circuit that um, the parties will compute in the second round. Okay, this is due to the, due to the fact that this dealer functionality is is quite small. All it is is kind of um, you know sampling and distributing um, PRF keys and shares of PRF keys. Okay, so what we have is this first message synced FMS and PC. And in our final step, we show a, a generic transformation from FMS um, to your own NPC to reusable to your own NPC. And then again, at a very high level, this is kind of the intuition for this step. Um, you, one can think of a first message succinct NPC as somewhat of an expanding object, similar to a PRG, um, since there's some small amount of communication that goes on in the first round. And then that kind of the resulting um, correlations from that communication can be expanded um, to compute some large circuit in the second round. Um, reusable NPC can be seen as a strengthening of this in the sense that um, you can expand the, the, that, those first round correlations to compute potentially maybe unbounded number of second round circuits, um, potentially exponentially many. So this can maybe be seen as kind of an exponentially expanding object like a PRF. Um, and given this, uh, you know, what we do is basically just adapt, adapt this famous, you know, GGM uh, tree-based construction of a PRF from a PRG, kind of a mildly expanding object to um, fully expanding object. So we adapt this to the MPC setting and show a tree-based approach to taking any first message succinct MPC and producing a reusable MPC. Okay. And um, I, again, I won't go into any more details of this and you can see the paper for that. Um, but it's essentially this, this GGM approach where kind of instead of having a PRG at each node, you essentially have an FMS MPC at each node. And the whole tree, we again collapse the whole tree into two rounds um, using garbled circuits. Okay. Um, good. So now, so that kind of completes the high level overview of our construction. I'll just uh, quickly conclude. Um, so I, I guess really the main take. One of the main takeaways I would say is that uh, our work really shows that uh, one can achieve this really minimal interaction pattern of, of reusable to, M to round MPC without heavy um, hammers of uh, obfuscation or FHE, which um, you know prior to, prior to our work were the only two known primitives, um, the only two primitives known to imply reusable to round MPC. Okay. And just just to recap, um, kind of where like what tools we actually needed to use from prior work um, that are all known from BDH. We use this HSS, we used a PRF and NC1, and we also used Turan FPC and like um, vanilla Turan FPC and all these kind of tools were, were previously constructed from DDH. Okay. Um, in terms of techniques, this is another work now in a pretty uh, long line of uh, works um, in, um, investigating these garbled protocols or garbled circuits that talk, right? Um, so it's another uh, another work that uses those ideas. It's also combining that line um, now with this like pseudo random correlation generator um, primitive um, that was recently introduced. And also this, what I'm saying is a garbled tree. It's basically taking like a tree based approach and kind of um, collapsing it um, uh, via garbled circuits. And so similar ideas have been used in um, a few um, uh, recent works. And then again, just to mention, there's a couple of concurrent and independent works, this work of uh, Ben Hamuda and Lin. Um, like I said, they, they achieve reusable MPC from pairings, and um, which is a strictly, you know, it's a stronger st assumption than us, but they actually get a um, kind of a stronger functionality in that their first round, the first round messages um, of the parties um, actually don't even depend on the number of parties in the system. Whereas we assumed kind of the number of parties N was, was known um, kind of beforehand. Okay. And then um, another thing to note is this other um, um, concurrent work of AJJM um, that was, that's focusing on reusable turn NPC from LWE. Um, they actually use a, a very similar type of um, FMS MPC to reusable MPC transformation um, as we do, which was our step three. Um, so that's um, all I wanted to say and um, thanks for watching.